Hello everybody and welcome to um, this lecture uh, for Level C Early Childhood uh, Core 1 on Language Development and Communication. Uh, the year is 2023 and the month is January but you will be watching this in February. And for those of you who don't know, I'm sure you do know, uh, my name is Lee McKenzie. So here are some questions for you to think about with regards to this uh, lecture. And I will attempt to answer all of these questions um, with reference to the research literature. And I'd like you to pause the video and to make some notes on what you think the answers to these questions are. Um, so the first question, what is the difference between language and communication? Are they the same thing? And why or why not? So just have a think about that. Uh, and when do children typically learn to communicate? And if communication is different from speaking, when do children typically learn to speak? And how do they learn to do this? What is going on when they are learning? And what are some problems that children can have when learning to speak? So if you need more time, you can pause the video and think about those questions uh, on your own. So these first questions. Um, what is the difference between language and communication? When do children learn to communicate and when do children learn to speak? These can be answered by reading the following quote. So please read the quote and try to answer the questions. And again, you can pause the video if you need more time. So what can we say then about this quote? Well, this quote suggests that um, communication is different from speech. It doesn't give us a definition of communication, um, but I've taken this definition here from Collins, um, which says that communication is the imparting or the conveying or the giving or exchange of information, ideas or feelings. And language uh, is used to communicate with others or in our thinking. Um, so that is defined uh, by the quote. Um, so language is a way of communicating, is a tool to communicate. Um, interestingly, children can communicate before they speak, which again suggests that speech and communication are not synonymous, not the same thing. Um, to give an example, you may go to a foreign country and you may go into a shop to buy something. And even, you, even though you don't speak the language, you still might be able to buy that thing by pointing by making certain gestures, by asking them to, to write things down if you don't understand, by expressing that you don't understand, um, or nodding that you do understand, or looking as if you're not sure if you understand. So there, there are lots of things that we can do without speaking in order to communicate. So we can communicate with people who don't speak our language, which again tells you that communication is different from speech, is different from uh, language. And I think the key phrase there is language is a system of symbols. Um, certain gestures don't form a system of symbols in, in and of themselves, um, but language does. And before the age of eight months, most children can communicate. And after the age of eight months, 
children start to use language in order to communicate. So, language is a system of symbols, and just to show you how different those symbols can be, here are a couple of examples um, from history. And a related question to language being a system of symbols is, what are the components of language? So, what are the parts that make up language, that constitute, that... Um, are the, make up the whole of language. Um, there are four components. What do you think these components are? So, there are four basic aspects of language that have been studied, and these are syntax, semantics, pragmatics, and phonology. Um, lots of syllables, lots of, um, lots of letters. And possibly these are new words for you. Um, but I'm not going to tell you what these words mean. I'm going to ask you to try to figure out the meaning of these words from a context. And it doesn't matter if you can't because I will show the answers in a minute. So try to complete the gaps in this text. Um, which is an extract from Levine and Munch, who are talking about language. So what do you think goes in the first gap? Syntax, semantics, pragmatics, or phonology? What do you think goes in the second gap? You can pause the video and do the activity yourself, and in a minute we are going to check our answers. So let's see how close you were to the right answers. So there are four basic aspects of language. Phonology. You may have got this answer right because phonology contains the word phone. And we know phone is related to sound. Um, so you may have used that clue to help you to guess that phonology is related to sounds. And think about how difficult it is to make certain sounds in English, um, like teeth or teething. Yeah, this requires us to use our tongue against our teeth and to blow air through it. Teeth. Yeah. Um, this is not easy for adults who don't speak English to do. Um, and often it just uh, means that these people will say teeth. Um, the, the th will become a t. Um, but children don't have any problems picking this up. Um, in most cases, I should add. Um, Syntax, you may have guessed, is the grammar of a language. So it's another word for grammar. And syntax more specifically relates to the order of the words and how we change words. We could break down grammar also into syntax and morphology, um, but we don't need to go there. It's another long word. Um, it's sufficient to know that language can be broken down into components and that these are the main components. Uh, semantics is to do with meaning. Again, you may have heard the word semantic in the past. Um, and then pragmatics is about how we use the language in different contexts. So, for example, in this video, I'm trying to speak relatively slowly and to avoid using complex language because I'm try trying to uh, teach these new concepts. Um, if I was speaking to um, a fellow researcher, um, I probably would be able to use more complex language and that person would be able to follow me. Um, and thinking about children, um, when we talk to children, we do so in a certain way and we avoid, again, complex concepts that they may not understand. So we're always adjusting our language 
to our audience and to the context, and this is to do with pragmatics. Um, so what helped you complete this, this activity? I'm hoping that there are some clues in there that helped you to complete the activity. Um, and this is how one of the ways in which children can learn, can acquire new vocabulary is using the context and the clues to figure out the meaning of what they are being told or what they are hearing. Okay. Um, but again, this is more difficult for adults. Yeah. So this tells us something about the process of learning a language, which I'll come back to later. So just to consolidate these four concepts, phonology, syntax, pragmatics, and semantics, um, let's do an activity um, to help fix those concepts in your mind. And I'd like you to look at the following four language problems, one, two, three, and four, and decide is the problem that the child is having in each case to do with phonology, syntax, pragmatics, or semantics. So just pause the video and try to do that activity on your own. So let's go to the first one. Um, how's your daughter? Is she still in hospital? Actually, she's, I want some sweeties. Um, you may have experienced this um, in your own lives, that a child would interrupt you and will not be very polite in doing so in order to ask for something. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, we can't blame the child for this because they're still learning what we call the pragmatics of the language which is the rules for turn taking and how to ask for something politely. Um, so we need to be patient with children because they're learning this aspect of language, not to interrupt and how to ask for things in the appropriate register. In the second example, where did daddy go? Daddy go to the shops. Oh, that's right. Daddy went to the shops. This is a syntax or grammar problem. Uh, the child doesn't know the correct form of the past form, the, the past uh, simple of go. And they overgeneralize the rule by adding an ed ending. Um, this is really amazing to listen to when you hear a child say, the teacher teached or I catched the ball. Um, or the teacher bring, or mummy, mummy bringed. Um, because this tells you how complex the brains are of young children, is that there is a process of uh, learning the rules of a language and overgeneralizing rules of that language in order to figure out how the rest of the language works. So they obviously haven't come across many regu irregular verbs, and ir irregular verbs are more difficult to learn. What is an irregular verb? When the past tense involves more than an ed ending. Um, so bring, brought, catch, caught, teach, taught. Those are three irregular verbs. Regular verbs would be verbs where you simply add an ed ending to make the past. So walked talked, um, reached, uh, speak, past tense would be spoke, which means it's irregular. And you will hear children saying he speaked instead of he spoke, uh, because they're still learning the rules of the language. Um, the next one is, uh, we could go to the zoo and see the elephants. Ephalents. This is called metathesis, um, where the order of consonants is altered. Other examples you may have heard of this include popsital and helipopter. And it's natural that they're still getting their head around a the language, they're still getting their tongues around a the language, 
that they're going to have these kinds of problems. Okay, this is part one. Part two will follow.